We've just heard from Professor Poppy about the important inflammatory foundations of troublesome asthma and our tools to address that inflammation, primarily inhaled corticosteroids. In this brief presentation, I'd like to help make the transition from those principles of anti-inflammatory care to the real world with patients who misuse those anti-inflammatory therapies. This, to me, is one of the fundamentals of our asthma management. At least three decades ago, we recognized that patients with asthma had airways that resembled those on the left. This is an airway biopsy of a patient with asthma. It's difficult to recognize as an airway biopsy. Up at the top, where we're meant to be seeing pseudo-columnar ciliated epithelium, it's hard to recognize epithelium. And below the basement membrane, there's a sea of inflammatory cells, which in the appropriate stain, we would recognize as eosinophils. If we move to the right, we see a much more normal-looking airway biopsy. There is definitely intact epithelium at the top of the picture, and in the mucosa, there are hardly any inflammatory cells. But this is the same patient before and after inhaled corticosteroid therapy. And it was around this time in our approach to asthma, we recognized that anti-inflammatory therapy, inhaled steroid therapy, should be front and center, the foundation of our care for persistent disease. Another principle that was developed early on was the notion that we had best introduce that inhaled corticosteroid therapy early. If we look at these results in a variety of patients with asthma, on the y-axis we see the resulting improvement in FEV1 after inhaled corticosteroids are introduced. And we see four different clusters of patients. It's quite clear that the best results are in the first two groups, those who began inhaled corticosteroids early, those who began it later had suffered irreversible changes, remodeling, if you will. So another principle, begin the inhaled corticosteroid, the anti-inflammatory therapy early, if at all possible. Of course, we're not in this a treatment of asthma for just a few weeks or a few months, and it's important for a lifetime disease that our patients take their therapy regularly and well into the future. We're after, in other words, good adherence for, for day-to-day -day treatment, and we're after persistence in the long term. How do we encourage that? There's an interesting example that I'll share with you from a number of years ago, and that to my mind, it tells us something about the influence of drug efficacy. So here we have from a health maintenance organization in the United States, the number of prescription refills observed over a period of time in patients, as shown here, taking the old fluticasone propionate, the inhaled steroid intended to be used twice daily. It's a low prescription refill rate, although it is an effective therapy. If we move to something that's arguably more effective, but a bit cumbersome, we could add salmeterol. Now, this is salmeterol in a separate inhaler, so we now have a patient juggling two inhalers, but presumably for better efficacy. Yet, the prescription refills remain low. If we move to the next example, fluticasone, Montelukast, not terribly effective as an additive, not surprisingly, not a great increase in prescription refill rate, in fact, not at all. And then finally, we move to the next column, which is salmeterol and fluticasone in one inhaler, and efficacious and much simpler than the open ICS lab combination we looked at earlier, and we see prescription refill rates double. So simplicity has an important role in encouraging that adherence, and perhaps in the long run, persistence. I can't resist though going to the last column. There's Montelukast, a once-a-day tablet, not a terribly potent anti-asthma regimen, but it is simple and the prescription refill rates are high. The message is that simplicity becomes extremely important in the long term. 
And ideally, we want something that's both effective and simple for patients to take. Let's move forward. One of the ways we can do this, of course, is to make sure that our anti-inflammatory therapy is taken with the simplest of possible schedules. And here's a study from just a few years ago looking at the adherence of patients, that is, how many take more than 75% of the prescribed doses with, on the left, once daily administration of an inhaled steroid, or to the right, twice daily administration of an inhaled steroid. Tremendous advantages to simplifying the treatment regimen. We can use this with emerging therapies, 21st century therapies. We know that as we look at older inhaled corticosteroids, so on this chart to the right, budesonide, for example, and compare them to newer inhaled corticosteroids, one major difference is glucocorticoid potency. And there are tremendous advantages, and we could talk about, for example, better therapeutic window. But one of the terrific advantages of an agent like fluticasone furate that has tremendous glucocorticoid receptor affinity is a longer duration of action. So here's a graph that will outline that for us. This is simply the results of inhaling on spirometry over a 24-hour period, inhaling in the bottommost line, placebo. In the middle line, fluticasone furate in its lower dosage of 100 micrograms. And in the topmost line, fluticasone furate, 100 micrograms, coupled with volanterol, 25 micrograms. So our contemporary agents with high glucocorticoid receptor affinity can produce benefit that lasts for 24 hours, and that allows for a simplified once-daily dosing strategy. What will that mean in the long term? The data I'll share with you is from the UK. It looks at cohorts of patients who receive various ICS lab of prescriptions. We'll look at fluticasone furate and volanterol, the once-daily combination of ICS lava. And it's compared to patients who receive prescriptions for budesonide formoterol, typically given twice daily, or beclomethasone formoterol, again, typically given twice daily. The details are here. Patients receiving those prescriptions for their asthma. And the outcome, the primary outcome in this review of data is their persistence with that prescribed therapy over the subsequent year. And we'll also look at adherence. The patients were propensity score matched so as to, as best as possible, compare like to like. Let's have a look at the results. First, primary outcome. And as you can see from the comparison of fluticasone fewer rate and volanterol to budesonide for moderol, the persistence is higher with the simplified effective once daily treatment regimen. The same thing to the right with the comparison to beclomethasone for moderol. If we move on to some of the details, the top row, mean adherence, percentage of prescribed doses taken. In both comparisons, there is greater mean adherence with the simplified once daily regimen. If we look at the middle row, it's the proportion of patients who manage to take 50% of the prescribed doses, again, better with fluticasone and volanterol versus the twice daily regimens. And in the bottom row, percentage of patients taking at least 80% of the prescribed doses, and again, the outcome favors the simple and effective once daily regimen. So, to summarize, I think as we take our principles of anti-inflammatory therapy and begin to look at them in the real world, we'll agree that early and sustained anti-inflammatory treatment of asthma is associated with better long-term outcomes. Efficacy and simplicity both influence patients' adherence in the medium term and persistence in the long term. And finally, the real-world data that we gather so far demonstrates greater persistence and adherence with once daily fluticasone fewer rate and volanterol as compared to twice daily budesonide formoterol or twice daily beclomethasone and formoterol.